Hi, this is the basic tutorial for the InfoSemantics Masquerade widget. This widget allows you to do masking effects inside of Captivate. So, what's a mask? Well, masking is a feature of many graphic design and interaction programs, and what it allows you to do is hide or reveal one graphic according to the boundaries of another graphic. So this is probably something that's easier to show you rather than to tell you. So let's just dive into an example. So this is the first slide of my course, naturally the title slide. I have my course title and my course subtitle here. And what I'd like to do is have these two titles nicely revealed with a wiping effect. And to do that, I'm going to use the masquerade widgets masking capabilities. So in order to use a mask, you really need two objects. You need the objects that's going to act as the mask, which is going to hide the second object, which I like to call the masky, the object that is going to be hidden. So in this situation, my course title is going to be my mask E. What I've got to go and do now is create my mask object. And for that, I'm going to use a smart shape. So over here on the toolbar, I'm going to click the insert smart shape button and I'm going to use a rectangle. So I'll just draw this rectangle roughly over the top of my mask key. And now I'm going to give it an instance name so that the masquerade widget can pick it up. And I'm going to name it masker one. Okay, and I've already given my course title an instance name of masky one. Okay, so in this case, this particular mask is not going to be very practical, but it is going to help explain what masking does. So let's just go to my masquerade widget, which I already have inserted up here at the top of the slide. I'll double click it to open up its settings, and you can see this widget settings aren't very complicated. All you have to do is tell the widget what the mask's name is, which is masker1, and what the maskee's name is, which is maskee. One. This transparency uh, slider I'll get to in a moment, but we'll just click OK for the moment and then we'll press F4 to see what happens. So in the output, you can see that the part of the course title that is being shown is the part that overlaps with the mask. So if I was to move the mask over to the left here and then republish, we will only be able to see the course section of the course title caption. Okay, so just static like that, this mask isn't really all that useful to me. But where it will become useful is if I apply an effect to the mask. So let's go and do that now. First of all, I'm going to make sure the mask can extend over the top of the whole course title. Then I'm going to move it to the left so it's just off to the side. And I'm going to go into the effects panel. In there, I'll add an effect, a motion path effect, left to right. And I'm going to get it to start at second one and uh, stop at second two. Now, inside the preview area here, I'm going to press this little box in order to adjust the motion path. And I'm going to make sure that it ends relatively in the center of my course title there, which will make sure the mask covers it entirely. Okay, let's press F4 and see what happens. So come the start of my course, whoop, we've got that lovely swiping effect, which reveals the title. So that's pretty neat. Um, what if I wanted to do that for the subtitle as well? Well, this is one limitation of the masking widget. A mask can only have one mask key and vice versa. One mask key can only have one mask. So if I want to have a wiping effect on this subtitle as well, I need to go and create a, another rectangle. But that's easily enough done. I'm just going to actually copy this rectangle, paste it back in, drag it down underneath here, and then I'll just adjust the animation uh, so that it is going to stop in the middle of the subtitle and I'll make it start about second two. So you've got a nice sort of staircasing reveal of your course title and your course subtitle. Now, of course, I'm going to need to give this mask a meaningful name. So I'm going to go back in here and call it masker two. Now, this is very important. Never, ever, ever name your mask just 
mask like that. This is a predetermined keyword inside of Captivate. Uh, so it's not going to like it if you call your mask just mask. So you always need to call it masker or mask one, mask two, or just M so that you can keep Captivate happy. Otherwise things break. Well, it's horrible. Anyway, I've already given my course subtitle a, oops, sorry. Oh, I call that masker one. I need to go back and call that masker two. Yeah, always be careful with your item names. Okay, as I was saying, I already have my course subtitle here with a item name of masky2. So all I have to do is double click, open up my masquerade widget and add another mask. Call this one masker2 and mask e2 as well. Okay, let's have a look and see how that works. So in the published output, first of all, my course title and then my course subtitle are both revealed with a lovely wipe, which I have full control over. If I wanted that to come from the top, all I'd have to do is change the effects animation from the left, from the right, from scaling out from the center, all that can be controlled by the effects. But here's another thing. What if I wanted, instead of that hard edge wipe, I wanted to have a nice, like a gradient fade in. Well, that is possible with the masquerade widget as well. And also very simple. So I'm going to close out of my preview and I'm going to select my mask. And then in my fill section, I'm going to click on that and I want to choose a gradient. I'm going to choose this custom gradient I made before, which is just got this faded edge on it here. If you have a look at the gradient here, you can see on my last gradient, the color there has no alpha, so it is invisible. But the uh, gradient over here has full alpha, so it is gradually going transparent. So if I test this movie again, you'll see that the course title now fades in gradually. And because I haven't adjusted that animation, you can see the end of it there is still a little faded out. However, if I went into my widget and I, for that masky and masker one, unchecked the transparency section and clicked OK and then republished, you can see that now that wipe has a hard edge, just like the one below it. So if you want to use this uh, gradient transparency feature, you'll need to make sure that use transparency checkbox is turned on. And you can use pretty much any object you like as a mask. You could pull in a PNG with all these funky transparency differences according to a chain pattern or something or other, and then apply that to another object, have it animate across and you've got that transparency going across the object. This is all possible using the masquerade widget. So please stay tuned to the Info Semantics YouTube channel as we are going to put up some more examples of how to use the masquerade widget, especially in combination with some other widgets. And you're going to see you can do some <laughs> amazingly cool stuff with this widget.